your representative, God, to act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly. And so, God, I pray that we would, uh, as that ancient verse that talks about King Saul, who went out on a hunt to hunt down David to kill him, who saw David as an other, who saw him as a threat and wanted to go and to destroy him, and yet finds himself prophesying or Naba, being under the influence of your spirit so that he couldn't carry out uh, his evil intentions on that day. And so, God, I pray for us and for our community, for our community leaders, for our families, for our children, for our grandchildren. God, I pray that we would be under your influence, that we would act justly, that we would seek mercy. Um, God, that we would continue to be service above self, that we would continue to love others, God, um, as you call us to. And God, that your, your love might permeate every inch and aspect of our society. And so God, I thank you for friends. I thank you for fellow leaders in this community uh, that are called to um, create a different future uh, for all, not just Aurora, not just Colorado, but for our, our world. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you, John. Uh, if everyone will please join us for the four-way test. And you can unmute yourselves. Okay, so um, the four-way four test. The test of the things, things we think, we think yeah. say, and do. do. First, first, is it the, the truth? truth? The truth? Second, is it fair to all? Third, will we build good or better, better friendships? Fourth, will we be beneficial to all concerned? Thank you. Okay. If you will please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation under, God, under God, indivisible, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Okay, let's see if I can get this with sound this time. God bless America so much david see all those cleaves in the background there 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 are future leaders in the army <laughs> if we had kept watching she asked everybody to sing but they don't sing so <laughs> okay so uh first i want to welcome um any visiting rotarians i know that we have a few Okay, John, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. Um, I just uh, had a few notes here so you understand where I'm from. Uh, I, I'm here from uh, Johnstown, Pennsylvania. It's east of Pittsburgh. Yeah. Uh, the Johnstown Rotary Club, uh, Sunset. Uh, we we uh, were an off, offset of um, the Johnstown Rotary Club, which celebrated its 100th anniversary recently. And uh, I'm a founding member of this uh, club, which started in 2009. 
And uh, we're a small club, normally meet uh, at one of our local restaurants. Uh, we're, and we're a small, very hands-on club. But I, I like to see that um, everyone talks over one another uh, for the four-way test. We, we do the same thing. <laughs> and uh, I, I like the idea of the flag, because we, we usually hold one up uh, when we're doing that. So. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I can tell you a little bit about Johnstown if I have a moment. Um, so we're, we're nestled in the, the Laurel Mountains, uh, uh, about an hour and a half east of Pittsburgh. We have lush green landscapes, uh, forests surrounding our city, great hiking paths at all levels, uh, small lakes, river streams uh, for boating, hiking, fishing. Uh, a big thing we're known for in Johnstown is the 1889 flood for you history buffs where the South Fork Dam, 14 miles upstream, which housed the, the fishing club, uh, uh, broke. And uh, for those familiar with Pittsburgh, the club uh, there was used by uh, wealthy elites such as uh, Andrew Mellon, Henry Frick, uh, Del Carnegie, or uh, sorry, Andrew Carnegie, and, and many <coughs> powerful congressmen. Uh, so when the, fail, when the dam failed, it devastated Johnstown where at the time its steel mill industry produced the largest amount of steel for the nation's uh, railroads. In the end, over 2,200 people uh, perished in the flood. Uh, because of uh, the influence of those elites, uh, the club was never held accountable for that failure. So I encourage you, if you get a chance, uh, go online and check it out. It's an interesting story. Uh, on a lighter note, we, we, we're the home of uh, Slapshot, and the movie All the Right Moves with Tom Cruise. So uh, you can put that in your little trivia. Uh, but, uh, just uh, to give you a reason why I'm here, uh, I reached out to Jim uh, Brickford and um, he, um, I, I was here last year when, when my son was going through uh, some uh, uh, cancer uh, um, uh, treatment. And um, uh, so, we had to come back and uh, he uh, put me together with Tom Klein, who, who was very kind enough to uh, put me up in his house. So I just want to thank your club. And... Glad you're with us. Yeah, God bless you, John. Yeah. John, um, thank you for, for coming today. Thank you for choosing to spend this time with us today. And our prayers go out to you and to your family. Thank you. Welcome. Yeah, welcome. welcome. Glad you're here. Do we have um, any guest, any guest today? And if you want to raise your hand or under the on um, participants if you want to raise your hand there or just unmute yourself and introduce yourself okay. I didn't see anyone and let me just make sure And I don't see Annie, so we won't be able to get our update from abroad today. And then I am going to turn over to Linda to do the uh, birthdays and anniversaries. Linda? Okie doke. Uh, we have two birthdays today. Um, Betty Jasisi and Don Massey both have a birthday on June 25th. So happy birthday, Betty and Don. Uh, anniversary. Happy birthday, Betty. Yeah, absolutely. We have two wedding anniversaries, uh, different days. One is Bill Wiggins and his wife, Molly, on July or June 27th, not July, June 27th, and Skip Arms and his wife on June 28th. A rotary anniversary. Um, Becky's not with us, I don't believe, today, but Becky Takita Tinko, uh, her rotary anniversary is on June the 29th. So, all happy birthday and happy anniversaries. Awesome. Thank you, Linda. Welcome. Okay. 
Okay, so I have a few um, uh, announcements from district. There is still opportunity to sign up to have your business in the business directory. There are over 200 different businesses listed in the business directory. So the more people that are in there, you know, the more people that are going to go and use that as a, a resource to check out your businesses. Uh, also from the, from the district, um, at this time, there are a few clubs that plan to open in July. The district is leaving it up to each club. Although they do not support in-person meetings at this time, it's up to each club to determine what's best um, in terms of safety and precautions for your club. For Aurora, Rotary Club of Aurora, we have set up a procedure, so some precautionary things that we need to do, including safe distancing and mask and sanitation, so that when we do meet in person, that we are being sure to consider the health and safety of all of our members first. Um, the district, the Rotary International Convention took place over the weekend, the general sessions on Saturday and Sunday. Both of those sessions were great. You can find them on um, YouTube. It was nice. I think it had over 7,000 um, views and that was the Saturday morning at eight o'clock. So I'm sure by today that that number has uh, more than tripled. Throughout the month of July, there will be the breakout sessions hosted by Rotary International. There are phenomenal topics all through the month of July. So I encourage you all to look at that and um, attend some of the breakout sessions. Rotary International Convention for next year is open and has been announced. So that will be held in Taipei. Through the end of the week, you can register. I think there's um, a little bit of a discount or incentive if you register uh, this week to do that. Um, local for Zoom meetings. Zoom has changed what its parameters are, and so any existing meetings that don't have a password or a waiting room will be canceled. So for any online meetings going forward, that will have um, a new link and new information going out to the body. And then um, the board has created three different, these aren't new committees, but we have uh, bylaw committee, policy and procedures committee, membership and finance committee. And if you have any interest in serving on any of those committees, then please reach out and let us and let us know. Okay. And then that that concludes our announcements. And then today we have um, a red badge that we are going to virtually present to Lori. Mackenzie and Lori Bates. So let me one second. Okay, so Lori Mackenzie, <laughs> I will start. I will. Um, I will start with you, and to let you know that. The members of our club are pleased that you have cho chosen to join our club. We have found that when new members become quickly involved in Rotary activities, they become more connected to the club and with Rotary International. At this time, we will be given and your sponsor or mentor should have provided to you a list of red badge activities for you to complete. Once you complete those activities, you will be presented with your blue badge. So at this time, it is my pleasure to present you with your red badge. So we will do that virtually, and then you will receive your, your badge in person. Is there something that you wanted to, to say? I just want to say um, thank you, and I, I really look forward to um, getting to know all of you and, and working with the club, and um, thank you for the warm welcome. It's a pleasure to have you. We're, we're excited that you, you've chosen Rotary Club of Aurora. Thank you. Welcome. Right. Lori. Thanks. The 
member of our club are pleased that you have chosen to join our club. We have found that when new members become quickly involved in Rotary activities, they become more connected to the club and with Rotary International. When you join, you will initially be given your red badge. You will or should have been given a list of red badge activities to complete. Once you have completed all seven Rotary red badge activities, at that time you will have the opportunity to be presented with your blue badge. At this time, it is my pleasure to present you virtually with your red badge. And when we come together in person, we'll be sure that you, you get your red badge. Would you like to say something? Um, like Lori, it's so, it's so much easier when we have the same name, but uh, <laughs> I want to thank everyone for the warm welcome. And I look forward to learning more about the club and, and becoming more involved. Well, it is a pleasure to have you and welcome. And if there's anything that either of you need, then please don't hesitate to reach out to any of us and let us know. And again, welcome. Great. Thank you. Yep, welcome. Thank you. Okay, we also have a blue badge. So for Kelly Global, uh, as a transfer, so you don't have to do the, the red badge with us, but congratulations on already moving through that red badge process. And that it is our pleasure at this time, the club has selected you to be our member. You have completed all requirements to earn your, your blue badge. I would like to take this time to remind you of the four-way test. And typically we all stand and recite the four-way test um, together, but I'm going to read it to you. First, is it the truth? Second, is it fair to all concerned? Third, will it build goodwill and better friendships? And fourth, will it be beneficial to all concerned? It is now my pleasure to provide you your blue badge and welcome you as a full and active memory member to the Rotary Club of Aurora. Thank you, Regina. I'm very excited, to be part. <laughs> very excited to be back in the fold. Do you know what they say? Once a Rotarian, always a Rotarian. Awesome. And again, we're, we are excited to have you and look forward to your participation in the club. So I'm going to go around and every week I ask each of you a question, name one thing. So I'm going to ask you, name your one highlight of Rotary this year. So I'm going to start with David. All right. So my highlight would be pulling up to the fire station too. <laughs> For tots for tots and seeing that the parking lot was completely covered with snow and having the captain let me use this heavy duty snow blower to clear it that was fun awesome <laughs> that's fun <laughs> uh bill rap learning how to use the zoom meetings efficiently awesome linda you know, I, I'm going to count it in this year because it actually opened in August, but it's the uh, Red Tail Hawk Park. That totally was the most fantastic thing that this Rotary Club has done in my opinion, is the park. So anyway, that's fine. Okay, thank you. Um, Lori Banks? Well, I, I'm not, I don't know if I have necessarily a highlight of the year after this being the second meeting, but I can Receiving say... Receiving your red bag. Oh, there, there you I was going to say, the, I was going to get there, the red badge, and also just, I've spent some time just doing some research and looking up um, on the website and things of that nature about the organization, so that was a highlight for me. Awesome, that's great, thank you. Uh, Bill Wiggins? And what, you're still muted. Okay. Am I on now? Yep, there you go. Good. I think the opening of the Red Tail Park was the highlight of my rotary year. 
Skip arms. Yeah, I'd have to agree. I live right down the street from the park, and so I drive by it at least every day. And, and just to be able to look over and see kids there is just a real warming feeling. So that has to be my highlight. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, Patty Bateman. I'm, I'm going to boringly go with the Red Tail Hawk Park as well. We were actually there this past weekend, and it was full of kids. The spray park isn't working, of course, um, but it's wonderful. What an exciting, what an exciting project. Awesome. Thank you. Tom Klein. Well, I guess my highlight is the Red Kettles and the Salvation Army. It always puts everybody in a great Christmas spirit, and I'm always thankful for the participation of everybody in the club. Thank you. Don Massey? Um, mine is hosting the largest food drive in the state of Colorado ever through the Salvation Army in partnership with the Church of Christ of Latter-day Saints, as well with Town Center Aurora and Safeway. Uh, we were able to feed um, thousands and thousands and thousands of family gave away over 170,000 pounds of food. That was my highlight and that was uh, during COVID. So hopefully that's pretty good. Awesome, thank you. Um, your Rotary highlight of the year, Donna? Um, I would say the multiple Sundays I spent uh, ringing the kettle uh, in temperature anywhere from zero to 60. Welcome to Colorado. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Dwight? Well, I got three ways to unmute and it screwed them all up. <laughs> but I guess I'd say my highlight was uh, ringing the bell with Tom uh, out at, uh, <laughs> for, the, for this last year. Thank you. George Peck. Well, there's so many great things, and of course the Red Tail Hawk Park, but one of the things that I really enjoy and it goes year round is when we we're meeting where we all got together is getting out of my car and looking and seeing three or four other Rotarians all headed, headed for the door. It, that just makes my day wherever I am, whenever I am. I love that. Thank you, George. Thank you. Uh, Brad Pierce. Yeah, in addition to being the membership chair and the, working on the state of the city, what I really look at in terms of my Rotary year is being able to present the Eagle Award to a uh, firefighter or police officer in Aurora that has gone above and beyond the call of duty. We've done that probably three times to different um, officers or firefighters this year and especially in this day and time i think it's very important that we recognize our firefighters and police even more than ever thank you thank you jerry there we go i got you unmuted okay early on in my uh, membership here uh, it was um, shots for tots, and that's still a thrill to me. Awesome. Uh, John Campos? Oh, wait, hold on one second. You're still muted. Um, I got there it. There you go. Okay. Yeah, sorry. Uh, well, yeah, so um, back home uh, during COVID, we've been kind of limited, but we, we did uh, create a... Um, uh, uh, raised gardens outside uh, our local library uh, and it educates the children on um, uh, like uh, bees and and insects and, and just the different flowers and we have a seed library inside the li inside the library uh, where one can check out seeds if they'd like so oh, that was that's a, nice yeah that's nice okay, thank you uh, Kevin Hogan Um, 
Well, besides a few that have already been mentioned, uh, the bell ringing is always fun. The Red Tail Hawk Park was outstanding. I have a um, grandson that lives real closely uh, by there and uses it uh, and loves it. Salvation uh, Army, though, I was able to watch that food drive that Don put on outside my window here as I saw thousands of cars circle the uh, town center. But I guess the number one is to have you, uh, Regina, as our president this year. And, and next year with Don Massey, it'll be a very, very interesting, fun year. Awesome, thank you. Uh, Kimberly? Are you on? Yep, I'm here, sorry, okay. I was unmuting. Um, so I, I would say that Red Tail Hawk Park was kind of my greatest um, um, memory and kind of what we did and accomplished in such a short amount of time with the club just all getting together was just kind of cool kind of reminded me of old projects that we did with the ambulance and so forth. So it was really cool to watch that happen. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, Lori McKenzie. Well, it's got to be that red badge. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm looking forward to the year and up next, the blue badge. Awesome. Thank you. Um, Kelly. I would say I'm finding a great fit for my Rotary uh, membership in, awesome. in the Aurora Club. Awesome. Uh, Nakaya? Um, I would have to say either Shots for Tots or just overall being welcomed into the group. Um, being so young, I know that sometimes adults aren't very fond of us um, being in groups like this because, you know, of our opinions. And so I just thank you guys for including me and allowing me to share what I have to say. Nakaya, it is a pleasure and I've gotten your name correct now. So <laughs> yes, you did. So it's a, it's a this, pleasure Nikaya. having you. Thank you. <laughs> Let's see. Pete? Um, the Red Tail Hawk Park was an idea of what this Rotary Club can do and hopefully we can do another project that close to home and that successful again soon. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Paul? And one of the things that, uh, that I like about being in Rotary for the last 34 years is getting to see all of, of my friends and, and people that work so hard in the community and and through all of this COVID thing, to, to keep our mojo and to keep Rotary alive is really important to me. And I'm, I'm so glad that everyone takes the time on Zoom because uh, it, we're all busy doing something or other, but we stop at noon and, and do this. So uh, my, my hat's off to Regina and all of the board and all of our members for making Rotary still keep its mojo. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, Phil? Yeah, I kind of uh, echo what Paul said there. I think what's been really cool this year is just the adaptability of the club and uh, Regina, your leadership and kind of taking people down the path on this new platform and, um, you know, still looking forward to potentially uh, getting together with people here in the, in the next month or so. But uh, I think it's been really cool, the adaptability of the, of the members. So. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to go to Rick. I know he might be on a call, but just in case, uh, Rick Martin. Okay. Rick Richard. Yes, I uh, <clears throat> Red Tail Park, Red Tail Hawk Park, of course, is top of my list. But I'd also like to remind the club of the foundation's other givings throughout the year. You know, the foundation average is about fifty thousand dollars in donations each year, and we did that on top of the Red Tail Hawk Park last year. And I'm so proud of our club for doing that. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, Dick? Dick, are you on? Let me 
Okay, Roy. Let me un let me unmute you. you. Hear me? Okay, there we go. Okay, well, what I really enjoyed watching was the development of Red Tail Hawk Park. When I previously lived out there near Heritage Eagle Bend, I was just up the street from Red Tail Park and I just watched it develop from the beginning and it was just a superb uh, development. Awesome, thank you. Uh, Sheila? Um, you know, as everyone said, I think to accomplish the park was a wonderful highlight and it just shows the power of our organization when we all come together and have a shared vision. But I think um, maybe a highlight is just sort of some tender small moments um, with flower power. It's great to see our club members just passing those flowers to residents at Cherry Creek Nursing Center. As I think about how COVID progressed in Cherry Creek Nursing Center, which I, I work right next door at Cherry Creek Retirement Village and we've remained COVID free but as many of you probably are aware, Cherry Creek Nursing Center experienced tremendous loss. I think they had over 25 deaths. And mm -hmm. when I think that we touched, I'm sure we touched people who have now passed. And it was just so sweet. And um, it really is all about our connections. And for me, really a highlight is our, our regular meetings. And I think being unable to gather in that way, it makes me that much more grateful for that opportunity. And then as others have said, to use this technology to bring us together, what I love about our Zoom uh, meetings is that I get to hear from people whose tables I don't usually get to sit at, at our lunch meeting. So that has been a real silver lining to me um, and makes me just um, feel like uh, I can really have a deeper connection with everybody. So, lots awesome. Of awesome. awesome. Sheila, thank you. Uh, did I miss anyone? If so, if you want to um, unmute. Uh, this okay. is John. So, I think the thing that uh, I had so much fun was with uh, uh, um, James and Judy ringing the bell, giving out. Um, Candy cane and having some great conversations on one of those more like 60 degree weather days. I think we both got a little bit of a sunburn that day uh, out in front of King Supers. And so that was just so fun hanging out, having great conversations, meeting people, meeting some other folks from uh, other Rotary clubs that uh, saw our, our shirts and, and stuff on and, um, and knowing that, uh, you know, our club does a tremendous work uh, when it comes to, we know that when we're out there, we're raising more money than, than uh, at least according to Sam, more money um, uh, to support a great cause than on days where they have like paid volunteers. So very excited that our club does such a, an amazing job to help so many. Awesome, thank you. Okay. Uh, for me, I'm gonna say that the highlight is to still be able to put service above self and to still be able to come together. To Sheila's point, you know, it's it's difficult to have time to talk to everybody in the room every week and people kind of tend to, to sit together or schedules are different and those things. So for me, it, it's been really a pleasure. I feel like I know every single one of you on a different level. I've learned so much about each of you and that's, that's been a highlight for me where I feel like um, I've had the opportunity to not only engage but to be engaged and i know sometimes in in person that can look a little bit different but um i absolutely appreciate that and so uh with that i'm going to go uh before our presentation today by kevin hogan i'm going to go to our kind of our end of year um, announcements. So today is my official last meeting as president and I want to first thank all of the members for, for your support. 
there have been a lot of things in our club and even district wide that I've had full support in. I've had full support in my run for district governor nominee. I've had full support in my election for our um, assistant governor for area two and full support in being appointed for the diversity chair. As your president of this club, I've had your, your support and your attendance on our Zoom and that makes the club you know it's it's not the leadership doesn't make the club the body makes makes the club and you all's participation and your encouragement and the nice notes that you send me in um chat and all of just being very complimentary and supportive i can't tell you all how much that means to me uh for my board for uh don Macy, I know he, he is excited to come on board and we're very excited to have him um, incoming as our president. He's gonna bring um, a lot of energy, as he says, and uh, appreciate his support. For Linda Witowski, our club secretary, who gets a text, a call, an email, or a help, help emo emoji from me at least um, twice a week and is always there with the answers. I absolutely appreciate her historic knowledge and her ready and willingness at any and all times to make herself um, available. Like she is that definition of a won't, won't say no. If it can be done, she absolutely will get it done. For Ryan Turbyfill, our assistant treasurer came on um, I've had the opportunity to work with him in other capacities and I, I was excited when he said yes to accept the, the task to be our assistant treasurer and has done an amazing job. For Mike Garcia, our treasurer, I want to thank him for his time and his commitment and being, um, this is really key, just being open and willing and flexible. You know, I created a finance committee this year and that's a daunting task to go through every statement and every account line by line and get down to the bare bones of how we're functioning financially as an organization. And for him to be willing to, to do that and open the books and have everything out in a timely manner, I, I can't say enough about that. And to that same point for John, who is not on this call, but John Witowski is our bookkeeper, I appreciate the same thing. In forming that finance committee to come on and open up all of our books and get us to a place where we have a better understanding of our, our finances, our policies, our procedures, our bylaws, what things we need to do differently moving forward. It makes it easier for me to hand off a club that is in a good position and know what work needs to be done ahead moving forward. For Patty Bateman, I'm actually gonna have to skip and come back because I'm gonna cry if I go to Patty next. So I'm gonna skip Patty and I'm gonna go to David. David is another one that all texts, all calls, all emails at all time to make this Zoom and this, this process work. I cannot say enough about his contribution on making sure that we have our Pledge of Allegiance, our, our speakers are set up, I'm set up, the meeting is set up. He has done an outstanding job and is always two steps ahead of me. If I ask for a simple basic slide, he's on there with a beautifully presented slideshow. Hey, can you put the President Pledge of Allegiance on? He has provided so many varieties for God Bless America and our Pledge of Allegiance and I just Truly, truly appreciate you always taking the extra step, David. For um, Jim Bickford, our immediate past president, um, thank you for, for your leadership and your continued commitment to Rotary. For Rob McGregor and helping with our, our international and service, I appreciate, again, all that you do um, with our youth. And for Pete, although we didn't have um, Ryla this year was canceled due to COVID, I appreciate all of the work and the input that you have done over many years as it relates to Ryla. For Kimberly, I don't see her, I think she's still on my phone. Our social butterfly, I don't think I need to say anything. You guys know like, Kim always gets gets us up and going and moving on the, on a social level and always has um, 
new things for us to, and new ways for us to engage. And so I always appreciate that. And for- um, Thank you. I, you're welcome. <laughs> I do have my, to jump off to the rendezvous call though. So I just wanted to remind you of that. Oh, okay. Thank you for that. And see, again, hard at work trying to figure out where we're going to be meeting next uh, in person. And for Patty Bateman, my, my dear friend, and one of the first people that I met when I came into Rotary eight years ago, who has always been a constant support and mentor to me. Okay, I'll text you the rest, Patty. Ugh, I'll cry. So um, to Patty, I just love and appreciate you. And speaking of love and appreciate, I see a very handsome man down here towards the, the bottom left. So to Omar Montgomery, the, the love of my life, my partner, I appreciate your support in allowing me the time and the resources that I need to be able to be successful in this world. Thank you. Oh. I also want to thank Phil Gibson for taking on the role of our finance committee chair. Um, he was charged with a, a very difficult task in a delicate situation of making sure again that our finances and our operations are in a place that we're sustainable and able to move forward. And on his committee with Donna Beeman and with Skip Noe and Ryan Turby Phil and I feel like I'm missing one. Rick, I am Rick, Rick, where's he at? I'm trying, here he is. Here you are. And for Rick Martin, I can't say enough how much I appreciate you all taking on that task again to make sure that we're always in a better position that we started and that we have, that we're sustainable moving forward and that the way that we operate. And I know with that comes a lot of a lot of tough conversations and a lot of tough decisions and all of them, Phil and Rick and Donna and, and Skip and Ryan and Mike and, and John was a part of that, um, really took the time and did their due diligence and did everything that they could to again put this club in a, in a better place. So with that, at this time, I would like to install our incoming president. Don Massey. So Don, you have been selected by members of this club to guide its affairs during the coming year. You have been entrusted with an important responsibility that will shape the future of our club. You have been elected to the office of president of the Rotary Club of Aurora by its members. It is an expression of their confidence in your leadership. I now have the pleasure of turning, officially turning over this office to you. Is that it? Did I miss it? <laughs> yeah, that's the, that's <laughs> Someone tried to call me right in the middle of that, and that was awesome. What what an honor. Um, we're so freaking excited. Uh, I think you guys know that. Um, and uh, Regina, wow. I am uh, blown away by you and by your leadership and how you've had to navigate uh, the oldest club, the largest club in Aurora through a international pandemic. Um, that, that navigation doesn't get lost by me and by the members of, of our entire club. Um, you have done a phenomenal job. And I think that is going to be your legacy of how well you pulled us together to navigate this. Um, Zoom is not easy. Uh, doing this and and having the partnership of the board and doing it so well, you 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 have done fantastic. So, um, what I'd like to do, if it's okay with you right now, Regina, can I do the little the presentation we talked about? Is now the right yeah, time? Yeah, uh, absolutely. Okay. 
absolutely. And if you want to introduce your new board, or do you want Perfect. me to? You want Perfect. To I'll introduce. introduce board? Perfect. I can introduce the board. What I like to do is let me, um, uh, uh, David, if you don't mind, could you go ahead and, uh, uh, on behalf of the Aurora Rotary Club and um, all of our members, we want to sincerely say thank you to you. As you know, I, I met with you yesterday and um, we, we love you, Regina. We're proud of you. We're thankful for you. We're blessed by you. And so, uh, as you see in the photos there, um, you, we've given you a plaque to commemorate a, a very uh, awesome year to navigate all that stuff. And then, and then in addition to the plaque, which I always think is cool, is we've officially given you your past president's pin. And uh, uh, I know you'll wear that with lots of pride, especially as representing our district as the assistant governor. Um, we are we're blessed beyond measure by you. So I just, hopefully you feel that, hopefully you know how much we love you. And I wanted to just say thank you and, and um, thanks for everything, really do. And then if, uh, if you don't mind, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and just announce the, the, the slate of um, board members. Uh, as you've all heard from Phil Gibson, Phil Gibson has been fantastic leading our finance committee and he will continue to lead that as our president-elect. So he will uh, take over in 2021 and uh, also continue to help us tighten our finances. Uh, so thank you, Phil, for, for doing that. Um, and then I'm gonna go down the list, in no particular order. Um, uh, so Brad Pierce is gonna handle our membership. Um, myself and the rest of the board will work closely with him and the club on uh, making sure we have a, a robust membership pipeline. So we're thankful for Brad for continuing in that role. Wanna uh, thank Jim Bickford. He has agreed uh, very humbly to fill the, the Sergeant Arms role. As you all know, that is uh, some big shoes to fill uh, with, our, with one of our dear Rotarians that have passed away. But he is gonna handle Sergeant Arms, will keep me on time and on, on point. Uh, he'll handle our happy bucks, he'll handle all that stuff. Uh, he'll continue to be the person that will be in charge of handling uh, speakers. So make a note of that. If you want to put a speaker on the agenda, work with Jim or myself, but Jim is going to handle that for us. Kimberly Armitage, AKA Mrs. Social. So she's going to continue to handle our, our social events um, as well as um, our um, um, just socials and everything going on with that. And of course, as well as Ryla, when it, uh, partnering with uh, Pete Trainer when it comes to uh, um, our exchange students. So, and then uh, Linda Wotowski. Linda, we can't yes, do sir. it without you. You're the glue. So thank you, Linda, uh, being our secretary. Uh, thank you so much for being so willing to continue to, in that role. Uh, Rick Martin is going to be new to the board as our treasurer. He will be, uh, he's gonna bring a great amount of experience. He actually has been the treasurer of our club in the past. And uh, with his finance background, we think he's gonna be a great addition to the, to the board. And then uh, Ryan Turbofil is gonna continue on as assistant treasurer. Thank you, Ryan. Really, really appreciate you. Uh, there's more news coming out about Ryan and what he'll be able to help us with our foundation. Um, <laughs> Thank you, Patty. Continue in doing our community service as well as helping us with um, everything going on in the state of the state of the city. Uh, that is a huge task. Thank you for that. Pete Trainer could continue on as Ryla uh, uh, representative and, and handling that for us. Of course, Regina Edmondson is our immediate past president, and uh, we're thankful for her guidance as both as the AG and a, and as a leader of our one of our leaders on our board. She'll be able to continue to make sure uh, we stay on on track. Um, Rob McGregor is going to handle international service projects for us. Rob is going to uh, really uh, be um, super engaged uh, in this this year with everything going on with COVID. Uh, but we're gonna we're gonna uh, ramp up an international project, um, and I'm excited about Rob helping us uh, make that uh, come to life. And then, last but not least, David Drybellis is going to be handling our information technology, everything to do with with uh, making sure Zoom is right as we go forward, making sure um, all the different informational stuff, which I don't even know all of it, uh, I should, 
but um, he's better at it than I'll ever be. So thank you, David, for handling that. So that's the, the board. I know it's a lot, a lot of people, but uh, they're very important. And thank you for letting me um, introduce them. Awesome. All right. Uh, can we find that? Sorry, I'm trying to move. Everything shifts around on me. Uh, thank you, um, Don, for that. So some of you, I don't know, you may have known, not known, I'm not sure. So over the last uh, four months, since we started in this format um, on Zoom, I have been providing all the speakers since March. So I hope that I can still contribute some ideas in that way in terms of our, our speakers and ensuring that we have a balanced and diverse uh, profile of speakers. All right, so now it is my pleasure. Let me make sure I can, I can find Festus. Okay, here you are. <laughs> I had to say that, Kevin. Okay, oh. so now it is <laughs> my pleasure to introduce our, our speaker and presenter today. I think that uh, the majority of you know him, about probably everybody in this room knows. Um, Kevin Hogan is a uh, very long tenured Rotarian. He is also the CEO of the Aurora Chamber of Commerce. Kevin, I'm turning it over to you. Well, thank you. Uh, Great uh, opportunity, and um, yet yeah, what a what a wonderful year you've had. And as we start July uh, with Don's leadership, thank you again. It's uh, having been a president of Rotary many many years ago. In fact, I was looking at my plaque. I was even trying to remember when that was. It's been 20 years ago, so oh, wow. uh, long time. <laughs> um, but anyways, hey, I uh, thought I'd just share a few um, thoughts with what's happened to our economy, and and it's actually screeching. Uh, numbers, a uh, new reality. Um, what's happened to us at the uh, chamber even in the last 102 days has been just astounding uh, how things have changed so dramatically. And so I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the negative numbers and then talk a little bit about some of the positive things happening. And so um, for the chamber, we were set uh, March 13th, Friday afternoon at noon. We were set for dinner uh, for about 700 um, uh, members of our community for the 65th anniversary of the awards banquet for the chamber. And so at about noon that day, the governor came out and said we could not have any meetings of over 250 people. And so at that time, we unfortunately uh, had to uh, cancel our awards banquet uh, that we were all set up for. So that, that was a little expense actually that hurt. Um, we are going forward though uh, with um, uh, new dates for some of our events. So you'll see those coming up. But and anyways, what a shocking, uh, harsh reality we all woke up with as the size of this recession continued and continues today to, uh, to upset a lot of things. The, the first things we uh, really got hit with was of course the COVID, the virus. Um, but since um, about mid-March now, we've had over 400,000 400,000 Coloradans file for unemployment uh, benefits. Uh, that's over 12% of our workforce and um, just shocking numbers. Uh, we were at one time in the United States, we were um, and still not far behind averaging about a million new jobless claims a week. So this is uh, worse than any recession we've ever had. It almost goes back to depression uh, area times. The good thing though about that is that in May, we've really had a strong rehiring uh, here in the state of Colorado. Almost 69,000 people were rehired in May. And so uh, we continue to see the strong gains in June also. Now, some of that is of course because of, of layoffs, but more furloughs. You're on furlough normally for about 90 days and then you come back and so we're seeing um, a number of people coming back into the workforce rapidly. The jobs that, of course, we all saw uh, just um, really uh, eliminated almost were, of course, tourism related. Uh, our hotels were affected and still are across the state. Our restaurants were overwhelmingly shut down almost overnight. And um, we had, um, 
I believe up to 12,000 restaurants that may not reopen. That's one in four restaurants. So uh, please continue to uh, eat out uh, curbside or enjoy some opportunities outside now as the restaurant industry re rebounds rapidly, but it's still far from uh, being successful. For those of us that do uh, order uh, quite often and have, as an example, um, Grubhub deliver your food, that's going to be hard for the restaurants to sustain. Sometimes those delivery charges are about as much as your meal and you, they're averaging somewhere 30 to 40 percent. So uh, it's challenging for the restaurants to make it when they have to put out a majority of their profit just delivering their product. So um, continue to shop till you drop uh, and support our brick and mortar. Um, Don, we were just talking about the town center reopening. That's 3,000 jobs, 100 and 30 businesses, so congratulations. The Stanley Marketplace is ready to reopen. Uh, some of our retail, though, did not close, and we thought some of them, the Southlands, um, has had individual openings, and so uh, they're actually doing fairly well. I talked to Joyce Rocha just this morning, and they're, they're rebounding rapidly. Um, what's hurt and continues to hurt, of course, is the online sales. For those of you that use Amazon, um, it had been really a challenge. Online sales were averaging only 3% of retail sales in the United States for basically the last five years. Years ago when the internet was created, um, it hasn't been that many years that we started. Internet sales were in 2010. Hard to believe only 10 years ago. But what's happened um, is a threat to our brick and mortar. And it's a major threat. It's a major threat to our uh, cities, the funding they have, uh, about 60%, if not more, of, of cities funding sometimes comes from retail tax. So uh, continue to shop at our brick and mortar. For those of you that do shop online, not to make you feel guilty, but you should, 93% um, of Americans will continue to use delivery. Before the COVID uh, challenge we had, only, um, well, actually, out of the 93% that will continue to use delivery, 60% had never used it before, 60%. And they will continue. So um, our brick and mortar are threatened across the United States. They're really threatened here in the Aurora community. And so those of you that shop online, I don't want to make you feel guilty, but you should. Uh, you should be starting to shop at your local brick and mortar because those jobs are not going to be replaced uh, unless we uh, start uh, supporting them. So I'll be a little harsh on all of us. The uh, numbers um, that were shocking, of course, were in certain industries. I mentioned the hotel industry, the restaurant industry, apparel manufacturers, of course. The airlines have uh, literally ceased to operate. They are operating but because of the stimulus money. I'm a little worried that that money is coming to an end this month. And what kind of layoffs are we going to have that we'll see out at uh, the airport? A majority of those employees have not been furloughed or laid off, uh, but that is the next round that uh, should be a little scary. Uh, about 98% of DIA, 98% um, decline in uh, passenger count had occurred uh, in, in early April. And so they are rebounding rapidly. Some of the hotels around the airport are coming back right now. And so we're seeing occupancies that were below 10% creep up to about 30. A hotel needs to be probably at about 60% to break even, so it's a long way to go. The Gaylord of Pride of ours in our community was scheduled to open today or tomorrow. They have not got their check off. Uh, Dawn understands the frustration of working with Tri-County, our cities, our hospitals, uh, to get those write-offs and, and get those waivers. So uh, still challenging out there. Some of the industries though that have done very well during this um, unbelievable uh, recession um, are, are the trucking industries. Um, our housing and construction continues at a rapid pace. Our bioscience program is, is expanding. Um, we have a phenomenal opportunity here uh, at Buckley Air Force Base. We are a finalist for Space Command which would be thousands of jobs in the future. And uh, we have a great uh, Tiger team put together. In fact, George Peck is on that at the chamber. And so 
Uh, right now, the governor has got a signing um, opportunity tomorrow, tomorrow on a bill that was passed, that uh, the House Bill 1326 that helps our military when their spouses come in. They don't have to go through licensing again. As an example, an RN, uh, you'll be qualified right away. So House Bill 1326 was passed. Huge opportunity for us then to add on to our opportunity to get Space Command eventually to Buckley Air Force Base or number one, of course, to the state of Colorado. Our big competition is our huge partners down in Colorado Springs at Peterson Air Force Base, Shriver, the Academy, and uh, uh, the, the Army uh, facility down there um, has been just outstanding to work with. So we are going forward with that and, and looking forward to it. Some of the things that have changed though, um, of course, have to do with the state budget. The General Assembly um, ended uh, last week uh, after a major delay, and uh, yet the state budget um, has to be cut by $3.3 billion. Um, not, not to be a Debbie Downer, but we do have a lot of stimulus money backfilling the state budget and some school budgets right now. So the problem is not necessarily this year. The real problem will be next year's budget. It will be the city budget, the county's budget, the state budget. Our higher educational institutions um, have suffered a great deal because that seems to be an area the state can cut all the time. So um, our academic institutions uh, coming back this fall uh, will be really challenged on how to come back, what type of rate increases, uh, what do they do for um, the dorms, uh, just about every aspect of K uh, higher ed is going to be affected, but also what happens in the next few months as we bring our uh, school children back, uh, uh, Cherry Creek schools, Aurora Public Schools, all working overtime right now every day to try to figure out what kind of schedule they can bring back to these children that, that not only need it for their growth and their education, but for their parents' mental uh, stability. If you are working from home trying to do daycare, I take my hat off. It's got to be an incredible challenge uh, for family members um, out there, and especially if you're doing uh, homeschooling. Um, I just really can't uh, imagine how you get it all done. Uh, what can we expect in the short term? We're going to see some bankruptcies coming into play. We have not quite seen that. Um, vacancies in certain parts of our economy will be affected. Shockingly, 93% uh, of Americans uh, continued to make their rent payments this last few months. But in certain areas, it's challenging. Um, our rent collection uh, in office was at about 92%. Surprising, there's not more. Um, our apartment's uh, rent collection was at 95%. Uh, what was delayed and still hurting, as you can imagine, is our retail sector. Uh, 50 to 70% have not been able to make rent. So they're working uh, with their landlords to add on to the end of their lease. We, we at the chamber did that. I, I went to our landlord the very first month in March and asked if we could add our lease at the end in 2024, convincing them that actually they'll make about $2,000 more over the length of our lease because the back end of our lease is a little more expensive than the front. That's the things we're working with. Our Small Business Development Center, Marsha McGilley has been a hero out there out in front uh, working with numerous uh, uh, grants, numerous uh, small business loans. And so those continue. The city of Aurora is coming out with about a $7 million grant opportunity. Arapahoe County is out with a $6 million grant opportunity. The city of Centennial has about $5 million. And then we're the chamber, we're working real closely right now. Uh, we have about $3 million in grant money to give out to small businesses. This is not a loan, this is a grant. And so if you need any information, please go on any of those websites, the City of Aurora, Arapahoe County, the City of Centennial, and Adams County, and take a look at their, um, their grants that are falling under the CARES Act. And you'll see that they're grants, not loans. And so there's uh, uh, a number of them that actually have their first phase ending in the next few days. They'll come out then with a second phase to help businesses in their operational costs to help businesses in their technology costs, and then of course in their compliance costs. So please look at that. It's phenomenal opportunities for our small businesses. 
And so uh, pass the word on. If you have anybody that needs any questions, please feel free to go to those websites. The Chamber website is loaded with information or just to call me personally and I'll try to direct you to where some of that, uh, that help could be. What again can we expect? Not only a bankruptcies and some more um, vacancies, um, but what used to be um, crime for businesses, location, location, location. That has changed to convenience, convenience, convenience. And so we're gonna see a lot of changes coming forward. Things though that we can expect that'll be challenging is our music venues, um, the science cultural facility districts, the, the opportunity to go to a play downtown, maybe to a concert out at Red Rocks. Uh, they're gonna be challenged for some time. Our tour, tourism industry uh, has been devastated. And so that'll take some time to recoup uh, and get even international flights, let alone domestic flights back. Um, the state of Colorado, um, we will probably not see a lot of tourism outside the state, but a lot of in-state travel. Bicycle sales, bicycle sales, if you haven't been on any of the trails, um, and I'm a big bicyclist, bicycle sales are up over 600%. Um, if you want to go uh, RVing, uh, that also is at a record uh, amount of sales. Finding an even an, a used RV is difficult at this time. So things like that have changed dramatically. Our movie theaters are not yet back open, and yet outdoor movie theaters are seem to be coming back. Again, we've, we've heard about our nursing homes, and um, Sheila mentioned about her facility, and yet the challenges that they have across the street. 24-hour fitness has closed. Those um, type of uh, centers will be challenged to reopen um, anytime soon. Dramatically, what has changed overnight is the massive um, opportunities for people to, to go into a building like a WeWork facility where they're really built to accommodate close working conditions. Um, that has changed dramatically and will continue to be a challenge in the workforce. Our large um, downtown office skyscrapers, um, we've got a huge interest, I'm getting calls, not, not daily, about opportunities out in the suburban parts of our community along E470, what type of construction is going out there for smaller office buildings, maybe two or three story buildings. There's a huge fear of people getting into elevators going forward in downtown situations. Downtown Denver, I've worked a lot with Kelly Broff at the Denver Chamber, a great chamber, uh, but the Denver, Downtown Denver Partnership, Tammy Doerr is a wonderful leader. She's been down there about 18 years. Downtown Denver has been really, really hurt. Um, they have the continuing challenge of, of, of our homeless uh, and how do we help our homeless out when sometimes we can't even get them into the centers. The convention center is still closed um, it is now right now an active hospital of 500 beds and um, the state is paying the convention center $60,000 a day and uh, it's phenomenal that we have that resource in case we have another spread of this COVID-19 but you can truly see the challenges that we have from a state budget. The unemployment insurance fund should be depleted completely from the state. You know that's an insurance fund. And that unemployment trust fund will be depleted completely of its money by August 1st. The state will then have to borrow from the feds and uh, to backfill our unemployment uh, compensation needs. We should though see a drop again, that stimulus money. If you are unemployed, you can get up to $1,000 a week right now. It has been difficult to get people to come back to work uh, at that level of compensation. So, um, Again, once that stimulus money has uh, depleted, uh, we should see some things come back dramatically. I mentioned our healthcare industries. Because we have not had very many car accidents, um, our emergency rooms are empty. Uh, David is not on with Falk Ambulance, but I can tell you David is having a financial challenge at the ambulance because without accidents, they're um, hauling our patients are way, way down. But he's doing a lot of hauls, but it's with Medicaid reimbursement, and that pays a small, small percentage of what even Medicare or our own personal insurance pays. So some thoughts there that we wouldn't have thought of that certain industries are hurting, 
our hospitals, like I said, and our ambulance companies are, are really challenged at this time. And so certain things in the healthcare industries, dental practices are down about 70%. Um, I mentioned urgent care is down 75%. Dermatology is down 85%. And so those selective surgeries are what um, um, are not happening. And uh, it's come to a realization that um, a lot of our healthcare is because of our elective surgeries. And so I, I think uh, that'll be challenged in the future too. Um, I've gone on for about 20 minutes and wanted to open it up for a few questions. Um, we know that things will have to change at our schools. We know uh, with, the, with the horrible situations we've had across the country, um, we have a, a police situation that has to be resolved. I don't believe in totally defunding the police department, but can we restructure and can we have um, uh, different programs for mental health um, help out our police uh, force uh, in the challenges they will have for coming forward, especially in funding them in some challenging times. So. I didn't mean to be such a big uh, downer, but uh, we do have a very, very diverse uh, workforce. Um, we were real proud of that, uh, to fall away from what used to be purely a uh, tourism dominated industry, uh, statewide and an oil and gas industry. We have diversified over the years and it has helped tremendously. But those two industries that we relied on for years, tourism and oil and gas are really gonna struggle to come back. Uh, I don't believe oil and gas will come back for probably 10 years. Um, and so those that had mineral rights, uh, those that were challenged with the industry will probably have a little bit of relief. Uh, we know that we had passed some very strict oil and gas regulations um, and um, they'll continue to be strict, but the oil and gas companies are leaving in, in droves. 20% of downtown Denver is office right now for oil and gas. I've heard 15% are up for lease right now. So uh, it'll have a devastating effect more on downtown Denver leasing than it might here in the suburban community. So certain industries are not going to come back uh, for many, many years. So um, gosh, I've gone on uh, uh, our newspapers today and the Denver Post was asking for donations to keep really the post going. The Aurora Sentinel, uh, Dave Perry, an old friend of mine, uh, struggling. Um, and so if you can continue to buy the Aurora Sentinel or get the Denver Post instead of online, uh, it could help some of those. Um, I, I'm really worried if our newspapers either seize or uh, maybe we go down to the Denver Post receiving it on Wednesdays and Saturdays is what I've heard rumors of. So um, Regina, I'll leave it there if there's a few questions. Um, uh, please uh, feel free to either give me a call or uh, hopefully we can uh, meet someday in the future. Um, uh, we are human beings that crave attention. I've uh, been at the chamber a long time. I never thought I'd miss our Thursday business after hours, but um, I'm looking forward to uh, re-engaging at some time and looking forward for us to get back as a Rotary Club to share um, lunch together. So. Regina, thank you for the opportunity. And again, thank you for a wonderful year of phenomenal accomplishments and yet probably one of the most challenging years we'll ever face. So congratulations. Kevin, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, I'm gonna go to questions. I'm gonna ask that, Kevin, that was such a, a thorough presentation and covered so much ground. I'm sure that a lot of people have questions. So if we could be short in our questions so that he has time to kind of field as many questions as possible, then I would appreciate that. And so you can uh, raise your hand, you can raise your hand in chat. I see um, Don's hand raised, so we'll go to um, Don Massey first. And then if you have a question, then um, raise your hand or feel free to unmute yourself. Uh, two, two things, first question um, is, will Rogaine help me fill in my beard faster and better like you? I'm not quite there yet. Do you think it'll work? Got to be a little older right now, Don. You're a little too young um, okay. to look like Festus. You don't even know who Festus with Gunsmoke is, so. <laughs> I don't. All right, but uh, seriously, just a comment. I will tell you, the city of Aurora, we are poised for um, a great rebound. I will tell you, our Macy's is the strongest in the entire region. 
our, our JC Pennies is rocking around number five right now, coming out of COVID. And international, uh, throughout the nation, we have bankruptcies. GNC, uh, Victoria's Secret, Bath and Body, all these people are closing stores to reduce their footprint. I will tell you, those haven't hit Town Center at Aurora. So I want to just encourage you, because I know you have to kind of paint the picture of what it is, Kevin, but I, I, I'm feeling better. I, I was pretty pessimistic about a month ago, but based on everything, I've just saw bankruptcy come out for GNC. I'm not on that list. So anyway, that was just a comment more than anything. Just to let you know that I think we're going to rebound really nicely. Thank you, Kevin. You did a great job, buddy. Well, thank you, Don. So, I, I really, I do emphasize the brick and mortar um, constantly. Um, we have to get back to that. You know, we've changed dramatically. We went from Main Street to malls, and now are we going to the mail? Uh, for our shopping and uh, so I'm going to lecture that continue uh, shop until you drop at our local brick and mortar. Um, I, I don't mean to be disrespectful and I don't think we have anybody in the club from Amazon but Amazon is not our friend and if you think it is um, it's the largest polluter in the United States. I don't know if you knew that. A billion boxes a day are not being recycled. A billion. Uh, the second biggest uh, uh, polluter in the world is Starbucks. Their cups are not recyclable. So uh, for those of us that love Starbucks and love to shop online, you are probably contributing to global warming more than anybody. <laughs> uh, I could go on into another, uh, I, I won't lecture anymore, I promise. Um, a question uh, Dave had was regarding the unemployment um, yeah, that $600 a week uh, came from the federal government, Dave, and you and I as taxpayers are eligible to pay for that uh, for years and years as our um, national debt um, has been risen by $3 trillion. I forgot somebody told me the other day, how long does it take to count to a trillion? Does anybody know? I can't remember, something like 36 thousand years or I mean unbelievable number to get to a trillion so I, I can't even count that high but anyways um, that's where the money is is uh, for, from our national debt okay. looks like it were there any other questions okay so then if there are no other questions and Kevin thank you thank you again yeah, I heard what a wonderful presentation this was. So I, I was looking forward to it today. Well, Thanks. thank you. So um, we are going to start to wrap up. David is going to put on a quick uh, slideshow as we exit out of the meeting. Um, I'm having a end of year celebration at Stanley Marketplace at the Stanley Beer Hall out on the patio today at five to seven. So please feel free to join me. We will practice uh, social distancing. Um, so look forward to seeing you there. And again, I want to thank my outgoing board for all of all of their support. I want to congratulate our incoming president and look forward to his leadership, as well as our um, incoming board to congratulate and and welcome them. And if there's any way that I can be a resource, then please let me know. Thanks. Thank you, Regina. Good job, Regina. Are people seeing the pictures? Nice. They look great. That's great. Yep. Good to see you, David. Thank you. Oh, that's fantastic. Oh, look. So we kicked off our year at, with our installation at the vehicle vault in Parker. That was day one. <laughs> Uh -huh. day one. Good day. And you're still smiling today. <laughs> good run. Oh, year, good huh? old days. Yeah, absolutely. District Governor. Yeah. Uh -huh. <clears throat> oh, look. There's the whole crew. I want to do that again. <laughs> Lovely. 
There's our star. Yep. And there's our clock. There's our, there's clock. our clock. I didn't know we had a clock. We have a clock at Red Tail Hawk Park. We have our clock. Oh. And we have a clock. And our Sean's mom. Our holiday party. Oh. Everybody loves a good bell ring. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Our assistant governor and district governor, the well, immediate pass. We partner with City of Aurora to kick off MLK celebration. And that was our state of the base. <laughs> like that. Our new district governor, Bob Kemp. Ah. That's our area two incoming presidents. We delivered food one week, games, books, toys to Providence at the Heights. Nice car. And we're back where this all began, our installation <laughs> a year ago. <laughs> That'd be a great Christmas card. Yeah. All right. We are uh, officially adjourned again for, for all of our members. Thank you. I can't tell you how much I appreciate all of your support throughout this without mm -hmm out this year and certainly could not have done it without you. And again, I appreciate all of the, the notes and the chats and the phone calls and the words of encouragement um, really means a tremendous amount to me. And yes, I'm going to hit end meeting before I cry. <laughs> done a great job. Thank you for everything. Great job, Regina. Yay. Good year. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you, everyone. Hope to see you this evening. Go have a cocktail. It's over. We will yeah. see you this evening. Thank you.